welcome to another video. Today I'm reviewing and repairing the Azito 12 volt portable pressure pump. Keep in mind most DC pressure pumps will be very similar to this one, so the contents of this video are not specific to a single brand. First up, the reasons for having a DC pump over a 110 or 240 volt pump. Put simply, you are off the grid or have a caravan or camper with solar powered DC batteries. Water is one of the most important things, so a DC pump gives you some redundancy in case of inverter failure, system maintenance or upgrades. At worst you could run it off a car battery rather than doing without. Azito are an Australian brand who make a range of budget pumps and power tools. The pump specifications are 12 volts and 4.5 amps. It has 17 psi max pressure. Flow rate is 600 litres per hour. Max lift is 1.5 metres and max head is 10 metres. One big negative right off the bat is these quick connectors. I wouldn't go as far as saying it's a deal breaker but it's certainly an inconvenience. Adapters to all different hose types is handy but threaded outlets are much more reliable and rip proof and would better suit the majority of users. In Australia they're available at Bunnings. At the time of this video they were $109. For overseas viewers you might find this pump for sale under a different brand name. Here's one, a C-Flow which appears to be the same thing in different colours. It's also available in 24 volt and 240 volt versions. You can find these and others like them on AliExpress and eBay.com. The main purpose for these would be camper vans, RVs or boats. But they're also good for off-grid use. I use it for my main house pump. While it doesn't have as much pressure as a 240 volt pump, 600 litres per hour is more than enough to run showers and a washing machine. I used to run it off car batteries, but car batteries don't last very long for off-grid purposes. After that I ran it from a DC converter. It stepped the voltage down from 28 volts to 12 volts. This didn't last long either. The DC converters fail and just pass 28 volts through. Surprisingly it does run okay on 28 volts. Perhaps a super long shower in summer might be trouble. It overheats and needs a break for a little while. At worst a watering can full of water will cool it down. In cooler months it'll just run all day. Winter no problem at all. I definitely have plans of upgrading this to a 24 volt model. Alternately, I'll build a better 12 volt DC converter. So far in the review, we've got a sturdy pump with excellent pressure. For the most part, it runs off 27 volts without any major problems. But there are negatives. I've gone through about 6 or 7 micro switches. The one it comes with was rated at 20 amps, which is absolute rubbish. I couldn't find a 20 amp micro switch anywhere, so I've used 15 amps. The big issue is the micro switch carries full load. Even on 12 volt car batteries, it was only a matter of time before the micro switch burned out again, so I've solved that problem with a relay. Before we move on to the relay, a quick word about micro switches in this pump. Its pressure switch is similar to the one here, it has a rubber gasket and a spring loaded button. At maximum pressure, as in the tap is closed, the button will engage the micro switch. There is a tension adjustment. The idea is to enable the pump to stay on at full pressure without switching on and off. At low pressure it's going to click away, but there isn't much you can do about that without installing a pressure tank. I have ideas of fitting up a timer circuit where the pump will stay on for a minimum amount of time. But in reality a sturdy relay is all that's needed. This was a headlight relay out of a Mazda Tribute or Ford Explorer. Eventually with all that contact argument I give up the ghost. Flip the circuit breaker. Here you can see the DC converter that powers all the down lights in my house and the missing one which was supposed to power the pump. I couldn't find a 24 volt relay at my local auto parts store. It's more of a truck thing. I never thought of asking an auto electrician, but here we are. It's just a standard headlight relay. 
the good thing about a name brand product, it'll do as it says on the label. Previously I'd wired up relays any old way, usually it was in the dark. This time I'm going to do it properly and put spade connectors on. There we go, that's the last one. Give it a test. Working as intended. It's a bit messy there, sitting on all the leaves and gravel. The next day I mixed up a batch of cement. I got it everywhere. I even made it a cover out of a broken old bucket. That's it, job done. I highly recommend having a cat near a pump. If there's any testing or diagnosing to be done, it's the only way. Final thoughts. If you buy one of these and you're not concerned with your warranty, hit up a good quality relay, keep a spare handy as well as a spare micro switch. Still, if you do it properly the first time, this pump should give you years of use without any trouble. And don't run it off 28 volts like I've been doing, that's just silly. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, have a look at the links information and updates in the description, comment if you like, and check out the other videos on my channel.